Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Eh, good afternoon. Okay, uh, we have uh, one new student from Bangladesh. Uh, Fasin Abrar, can you on your video and introduce yourself? Fasin Abrar. Are you there, Hasan Abra? Okay, uh, maybe he have a problem. My problem. Anyway, we go to the uh, next slide. I think this is the slide. Eh? We stop last week here. Yeah. Okay. application of models in uh, process system engineering so where we can uh, divide it uh, into four categories which is the design estimation control and monitoring for model based design and then uh, two approach for uh, to modeling uh, as i told you uh, previously we have a uh, First principles and experimental approach. Okay, so first principle is uh, by derivations using uh, rules and law in the theory. Okay, but uh, experimental, uh, we don't have to derive it, we just uh, capture the input and output data. In other words, for experimental, is empirical. Okay, so both uh, can. Uh, Produce uh, the models that we want. Okay, so first principle usually refer to fundamentals. We write conservation equation, uh, derivations, and constitutive of laws compared to the empirical, which is uh, based on experimental based capture input output data or simply called as uh, data driven. Okay, which perform perform experiments, uh, proposed model, and estimate uh, parameters. So model in real world uh, can be uh, anything, either is uh, human biology or transportation vehicles, um, tools and equipment for the, uh, what do you call this? Uh, disabled person okay for the disabled persons so all can be modeled okay and of the real world system uh, too difficult to build based on the first principle alone because it's uh, very complicated okay that's why uh, system id uh, can do it by perform the experiments okay and the data that we capture will speak about the system either the system is 
first order, second order, third order with disturbance or without disturbance, stable or not stable and so on. So in terms of physical modeling, uh, let's uh, go for the examples, uh, simple examples that we studying using uh, during undergraduate for mass damper and spring for this uh, uh, source is uh, transducers with the junction structure and physically meaningful parameters like this, okay? So you have a uh, GS uh, output divided by input, Y divided by U equal to the polynomials of the numerator and divide by the polynomials of the denominator, okay? Where A and B is the uh, coefficients of the polynomial, which is uh, in terms of the value of mass, uh, spring, and damper constant, okay? So this is the samples of the passive elements, mass, spring, and damper for mechanical system where we have a body of the car, which is the mass, the spring, and connected to the uh, damper. And this is the profile road. Okay, uh, that uh, the car will go through. So, but empirical modeling is different. We don't know what's inside the box. We call it as a black box. Okay, uh, we have no idea about it. Okay, so we just uh, inject an input. Okay, uh, using the standard uh, input test signal, and then uh, we capture the output. Okay, from the input and output that we captured using the data logger system. So we can build up the model of the GS that represent or mimic uh, to the uh, black box uh, uh, model is that inside uh, the box. By comparing uh, between the empirical and the first principle model, uh, I can see that uh, Physical modeling have a pro and cons uh, similar to the uh, black box as well, have a pro and cons. So let's see to the physical modeling. Okay, the advantage of it is uh, physically insight and knowledge. Okay, we have the knowledge we can derive, okay, using the law that already there and modeling a conceived system before hardware is built. So we can uh, simulate it. We can run using a computer program before we really build up the hardware. But the constraint or the drawback is uh, often leads to a higher system order with too many parameters. So when we do derivations, uh, some of the poles and zero that we captured is included and make the system uh, in the higher order mode but it can be simplified actually, okay? But uh, too many parameters make it the system uh, more, more complicated. Second uh, drawback is the input and output of the model has a complex parameter structure due to the higher order system and not convenient uh, for tuning because uh, tuning need to <coughs> have a knowledge on the model and the order of the system, and then it become complex. Okay, so difficult to analyze. Whereas uh, for the uh, black box, uh, the pro or advantage of it is close to the actual input and output behavior, okay? Because uh, when we inject the system with the uh, input test signals, Okay, uh, we have uh, and we get the, uh, the output. Okay, so actually the behavior of the system is uh, reflecting on the output of the black box. Okay, so we can see the noise, we can see the amplitude together uh, at the signal output. And for the black box uh, uh, or the empirical modeling is convenient structure for parameter tuning. Okay, because due to the simplest uh, model structure and can be useful for complex system, which are uh, too difficult to build using a physical model. Uh, on top of that, we have uh, some drawback for the empirical modeling is no direct connection to physical parameters 
okay? So this one can be either you apply a system ID offline or system ID online. If you apply system ID offline, of course, there is no direct connections to physical parameters. But if you apply the system ID online, so the parameters will be updated from time to time once the experimental is ongoing. So no solid ground to support the model structure. We just uh, capture the data and then we try several model structure, okay, linear model, non-linear model, second order, third order, then we plug in and see whether it mimic the real uh, model based on the estimated model. And then not available until an actual system has been built. Okay. So of course, uh, uh, we cannot get the prototype okay, uh, until you have the real actual system. If you don't have any actual real system, so we cannot do any experiment to inject the, the system inside the unknown model. So what is a dynamic model? So usually dynamic model is the value of the output signals depend on the both instantly values of its input signals and also the past behavior of the system. So that is the characteristic of the dynamic uh, model. For example, uh, a car seat in a dynamic system is one of the sample where the seat uh, shape settling position depends on uh, both the current width and of the passenger and how long the passenger has been riding in the car, which is the past behavior. So we have to capture uh, this data in order to get the dynamic model. So some uh, of the writers, some of the authors of the book define model as a mathematical relationship between the system input and system output. Okay, it can be described by uh, differential or in continuous form or difference equation in uh, digital form or discrete form transfer function, uh, state space, and full zero gain models. Okay. Uh, so it can be in continuous, it can be in discrete time. Okay. So when we talk about dynamic model, let's say uh, this one, a mass a spring and damper, where we have a response F of T as the input, and the output is displacement of the mass. Okay. So a simple one. By looking at this, I know already this mass spring and damper is the second order system. Okay. And uh, input is force and the output is displacement y of t. So by looking at it, the standard form for the uh, mass spring and damper system it is a second order equation. So we build up the differential equations. This is uh, considered as the model as well. Okay, as I told you previously. Uh, it can be in transfer functions, it can be in state space form, and it can be in differential equations. Okay, where M, C, and K is the mass, spring, and damper constant. So that one is a differential equation, and we can also uh, do it in the state space form, as shown here by define the state variables of the displacement. Okay, displacement is y, so when we uh, differential it, it becomes dy dt. So dy dt is the name of the equation for the state space, which is equal to a y t plus b f t y is equal to c y t, where a is the system matrix, b output matrix, and c is so b is the input matrix, and c is the output matrix. And then we can switch from the state space to the transfer functions. Okay, so this is considered as a model in transfer function form by using a Laplace. Okay, so the highest order is two, so it is a second order system. Or it can be written in the discrete form like this. Okay, y of t is equal to a one y t minus t s a two y t minus two t s is equal to b f T minus TS. So this one is considered as a discrete model. And this discrete model comes with the sampling interval, which is known as TS. Okay. 
So we must uh, be careful for this script form. So we must choose the right sampling time, TS, so that uh, we can get the very accurate uh, difference equation to represent the model. Okay. For simplicity, uh, usually sampling time is taken as one time unit and can be written as like this, T minus one, T minus two, and so on. Okay, E1 and E2 is the model parameters under investigations, okay? Uh, provided that the system constants M, C, and K uh, is known, plus the sampling time as well. So the difference equation shows that the dynamic nature of the model, so if the displacement value or the time instant t depends not only in the value of the force, the previous uh, time instant also on the displacement values of the previous two time instant, which is y t minus one minus one and y t minus two. And this equation can be compute okay using a computer can be programming using computer. Okay, and for the simulation purpose, uh, by writing it is uh, like this, okay. So in the iterative way of uh, generating values uh, of output Y, starting from the initial conditions, usually zero, until the final value, okay. And uh, with the measurement of input F, and we can compute this uh, using uh, simulations, and then we can predict the values Okay, of the A1 and A2 plus B, okay, uh, that fit to the difference equations. So, when we apply a system ID, okay, uh, we have input, we have output, and we cannot avoid the factor of V of T, which is uh, known as the unmeasurable disturbance. Uh, despite we have the input U of T, which is the control signals, despite we have omega T, which is the measurable disturbance, we also have the unmeasurable disturbance, okay? So disturbance have a measurable and unmeasurable. So the omega uh, WT and VT is the uh, two important uh, variables must be taking, uh, must be take care, okay, in order uh, not to uh disturbs the final value of the final models and usually inside uh this one omega t and ut is considered as the hidden states which is known as xt well uh, some case of study which uh, highlighted in the uh, textbook is the solar heated house by leonard jung where you have a solar heated house. Uh, usually this one is uh, located at Europe where you have uh, four seasons uh, weather. Okay, they put a solar panel here, okay, and the palm that will uh, pump uh, warm water in the storage, okay, so that it will uh, heat the house, okay, using uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, hot water that will be circulate uh, in the house, okay, uh, to warm the house. So usually the storage consists of uh, what do you call that? Uh, pebbles, okay, is a river rock that uh, able uh, to store the heat uh, inside the stone or the pebbles, uh, and then. Uh, will warm the water that will pump and circulate around the house. So the sun heats the air in the solar panels and the air is pumped into the heat storage, okay? So the pebbles will absorb the heat and then uh, the stored energy can be later transferred to the house, okay? So in this case, if you want to model the system, what is the data under concern? So the data and the concern is how solar radiations, omega T, and pump velocity, U of T, affect the heat storage, which is uh, Y of T. That's why we captured the data of the uh, storage temperature, 
Okay, which is here, which is a lot of pebbles here. And then a fan on and off, okay. And then which is on the palm velocity. And then the solar intensity, okay, which is the solar panel. So in Malaysia, we also uh, use this solar panel uh, lately, but it is off grid, okay, for a simple storehouse or a simple extend house. So you don't have to pay, you just have to buy this solar panel and put on the uh, top of the roof. Okay, and from there, uh, you can uh, on the lights for free. Okay, fan for free. And even uh, you can uh, supply for the water heater as well. Okay, so uh, in the School of Electrical Engineering, there is uh, one, uh, two lecturers involved in the solar panel. Okay, uh, so that uh, they are very active. Okay. Uh, and install it uh, on the certain uh, location where there is no electricity, okay? Uh, usually for the aborigine of the Malaysian, okay, where they stay in the jungle, but they don't have the facilities of the electricity from the MB. So another sample from uh, Al Jung is a military aircraft, okay? Also a system that can be identified we aim to construct a mathematical model of a dynamic behavior to develop simulators, okay, synthesis of autopilots, and analysis of its properties. Okay, so usually we are taking data on how uh, pitch rate, pitch rate okay, affected by the elevator, cannot, and the leading flat edge. That's why we have a data here, yeah? pitch rate, leading Edge flip, cannon, and elevator taken from the uh, military uh, fighter as shown in the in the picture. For biological system, uh, not to forget uh, on the LASIK surgery. Okay, you have a, if you are wearing a spectacle, so you don't want you want to remove the spectacles, so you have to attend a LASIK surgery procedure. One eye costs about uh, 5,000 RM. So both eyes will cost about 10,000 RM. It depends on the clinic that uh, uh, you go there. Okay, so basically, it, basically it is the job of the ophthalmologist, okay, where they have the system with the camera, uh, laser system, fiber optics, argon laser, and controller. Okay, so... For system ID, this is the main concern. Okay, once you get the camera and laser model, which which is a third order system, so you can uh, design the controller. Actually, it's a simple controller. It's a P controller. Okay, but uh, don't forget that this one we have a disturbance, as I told you before, based on the signal to noise ratio. If the SNR is high, so you can ignore the noise. Okay, so you can control the system well, provided that you know the mathematical model of the camera and the laser. So in our case study for these subjects, I will do, uh, I will uh, take data, real data from this hot air blower system. Okay, uh, Junyi, Junyi. You need, yes. you, can you name uh, applications for hot air blower system in our daily life? Uh, uh, hair dryer. Hair dryer. Hair dryer, all right. Yeah. Maybe in Surkuna. Oh, sorry. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you name an uh, application of hot air blower system in our daily life? Beside hair dryer. Hot air blower system. It's in the kitchen, right? Maybe. In the kitchen. Air fryer. <laughs> air fryer, good. For you, uh, when I 
name kitchen so you remember eh? <laughs> <laughs> i'm still thinking about the what's that uh, the, tea, something so. like hair dryer but to shrink the so air fryer is a new technology that using uh, hot air okay to uh what do you call that to give some heat and uh of your food stuff eh? you can cook using air fryer so you, the concept of air fryer it remove uh, water okay you remove water and oil from the food that you fry lah. Eh? usually we fry using oil but now nowadays people are looking for healthy food so they are using air fryer even though you cook your chicken using a, a deep fryer eh? deep fryer using oil but once it become cold you can uh, give a heat and hot again by using an air fryer okay so this is uh, some of the examples eh? so in the big industry also they have a hot air blower system so we will use this uh, data okay so let me in, uh, explain to you uh, so this is a very simple system uh, this system can be configured as uh, closed loop and open loop so once it is uh, open loop it is the first order system but when you connect uh, the feedback it will become a second order system so the blower is this one okay so this is the fan that we rotate okay we'll uh, rotate and there is the heater here grill heater so it's very hot then this fan will blow this heater and the hot air will go through the tube until here so the output is the hot air okay but before it goes to the uh, output there is a sensor here that measure the temperature which is known as the thermistor okay so this is a thermistor very small okay the hard the reality hardware and then uh, it will measure the temperature precisely uh, from the output uh, exhaust here and the data the input data and the output data will be captured by the computer and data logger system okay so I will uh, describe this one uh, later on. Okay. So next one is the hydraulic actuator system. This one also will be we will be discussed uh, and will be provide you real data. Okay. Uh, which uh, hydraulic actuator system uh, applied in the robotics? Okay. Manufacturing uh, crane. Okay, uh, for the building uh, design, a leaf and everything, a car and a lot of uh, applied hydraulic actuator system where you have a portional valve or servo valve bidirectional cylinder which goes to the left and to the right. And once the, uh, what do you call that? The, the shaft inside the cylinder moving from left to the right, so we can measure the position by using the LVDT, which is positional transducer. LVDT is a linear variable differential uh, transformer, which measure the displacement and convert it to the voltage. Okay. So this is the picture of the LVDT. Also, we have a pneumatic actuator system data. Okay, uh, the, the difference between the hydraulics and uh, pneumatic is hydraulics is using oil as a medium, but pneumatic is using air as a medium. Okay, uh, for force. Okay, for movement. Okay, so actuator is a movement. Okay, it receives a signal from controller, so it starts to give a movement either backward or forward or left or right okay depend on the actuator that you use so when you use a pneumatic actuator system uh, of course you need a co air compressor which here is the june air branded okay and this is the control valve okay and this is the electromagnetic 
sensor which this uh, detect the displacement of the shaft of the pneumatic actuator. Okay, when it moves to the left, uh, move to the forward and backwards. Of course, this one is the computer and data logging system for capture data, and the one with the H square here is known as the pressure sensor. And uh, DC motor control system uh, for speed and position also uh, under uh, our uh, data for analysis in the system ID subjects. So DC motor open loop is uh, first order, but when you apply a closed loop, it will be second order. And but if you take inductors as the uh, the value is big or high, so the system closed loop will become third order system. This one also under considerations. So far, any questions? Asin, any question? No question, cross. So how model are used? So uh, it apply in the scientific modeling, in the prediction and control, in the state estimation, in the fault detections, and in the simulation or operator training. So usually uh, we are using for the uh, prediction and control, okay, for these particular subjects. Uh, it can uh, vary from the complex microscopic models to simplicity microscopic models. But uh, a model represents essential aspect of a system with respect to a certain purpose and may take uh, several different forms, such as cognitive models. This one is more towards human concept. Normative models, purpose-oriented. Descriptive model, behavior-oriented. And functional model, which is the action and control oriented. So we focus on the functional models for these particular subjects. Okay, so this one is uh, same as I told you before. Okay, uh, by uh, first principle modeling and by empirical modeling. This one discussed already. And model category uh, can be, uh, depends on the linear or non-linear models. So if the system is uh, linear, easy to control, but if a non-linear, so we have to see what is the non-linear factor and try to linearize it. Okay. And another thing is you must know is the parametric and non-parametric model. So what is parametric model? What is non-parametric model? So non-parametric models is using a graphical approach, time response, frequency respond using both load, uh, time respond using a linear graph, cross correlations, uh, power spectrum density. Okay, so that one is considered as a non-parametric model. While parametric model, we are not using any graphicals, uh, but we use a lot of uh, polynomials. Okay, numerator and denominator. So parametric method estimate parameter in a user specific model. So usually uh, we will discuss this later in uh, chapter three. Okay. Uh, but non-parametric method is a method try to estimate the generic model. Okay. So as I told you before, uh, is using a time response approach, frequency response, correlation and spectral analysis. So this is the sample of non-parametric models. Okay, you can see a lot of graphics. Okay, uh, which cannot easily be used for simulation or control design. So often used for model validations of parametric model. And this one is considered as a parametric model. Okay, so easy to use for simulations for programming, control design. So this is sample of finite impulse response (FIR) model which is Y is the output, U is the input, and 0 0.3, 0 0.1 is the uh, coefficients yeah, that under investigation, and E, of course, is a, a noise. So that's why uh, the challenge of system ID is the system itself, uh, how you categorize the system. 
Okay, is it a black box or is it a white box? So the black box is more what I can say as uh, we have a zero knowledge on the system. For example, psychological system is a human thing, social system, economic system, biological, biological system considered as gray between black and white because uh, we have some knowledge on it. Chemical system, mechanical system and electrical circuit is considered as white box. Once you know the value of resistance, inductance and capacitance, once you know the value of the mass spring and damper or any chemicals that you use, so the model category become easy because uh, you know what's inside it. That's this what we call as the spectrum of models. Okay, so system ID is about building uh, dynamic models. Therefore, knowledge such as uh, early knowledge is necessary for successful identification process. So terms to characterize the model properties, for example, uh, ARX model, which we'll uh, learn in chapter three, auto-regressive exogenous model, followed from the numerical values of the coefficients and the number of delay used. Okay, so this one is considered as a parametric model. However, uh, it also uh, can be verified and validated using other different terms such as impulse response, step response, frequency response, and zeros and poles transfer functions. For example, this is a impulse response of a dynamical model is the output signal that results when the input is impulse, okay? So impulse signals is this one, okay? Impulse signals, narrow, uh, very narrow width, okay? Uh, which is uh, zero for all values except at t equal to zero, which is this one, okay? Where u0 is equal to 1, it can be computed as in the equation of ARX by letting t is equal to 0, 1, 2, and so on, and taking y minus t and y minus 2t, and the u of 0 is equal to 1. Then we can plot it. Okay, so this is a sample of the impulse response where delta is equal to 1 over 4, which is uh, 0 0.25. This is uh, what I call as the step response and impulse response, the output, okay? So if you still remember for unit step, okay? So this is the time response for second order system under them, which is uh, between 0, zeta between 0 and 1. Uh, this one is considered as the equivalent second order impulse response, okay? Impulse response from the second order system, which is known as a decaying sine wave. Decaying sine wave. This one also will be uh, discussed in chapter 2C, chapter two. Okay, so step response, sometimes you call it as a transient response, have a, a two main part, which is the transient and the final value. Okay, so it uh, can be generated, the input signal can be generated as like this, okay, a square will be injected to the unknown system. Okay, and then you get the output. Okay, depends on the, the model order depends on the damping ratio value and omega n value. So frequency response also one of the uh, topics that we will do, which is a frequency response identification. For the time response, the time response is given. You can uh, derive the models. While for the frequency response, when the boot load is given, you are able to derive the this equivalent mathematical model of the frequency response given, okay? For example, like this, okay? So 
on the left is the magnitude in decibel and on the right is the phase in degree okay so this is the magnitude okay sorry this is the phase right this is the phase phase angle okay so phase angle uh, you refer to the right and this is the magnitude okay so you can see that uh, this model is a one, two, three, fourth order model. Okay, S multiplied by S multiplied by S multiplied by S. So is an S power of four sample of frequency response, fourth order system. So zero on pulse is another uh, form of uh, Transfer functions, okay. Uh, for example, applied in the ARX model, where uh, instead of polynomials at the numerator and denominator, so we factorize the polynomials, so it becomes uh, roots of uh, of the numerator and the roots of the denominator, which uh, can be factored as the zeros and poles of the ARX transfer functions. Also, can be mapped. Okay, uh, the zeros and uh, poles can be mapped in the, this one is called a Z plane. Okay, Z plane. Where you have uh, unity circles over here. Okay, which is a zero, one, one, and zero over here. So you can see that when the poles is inside the unit circles, the system is stable, but if there is a one pole, even one pole outside the unit circle, so it becomes unstable. So by zero inside the unit circle, so we can see that the system is minimum phase, but if you have one zeros outside the unit circle, so the system is known as non-minimum phase. Right, so identifying the systems, uh, we know that the system is constructed from the observed or empirical data. For example, a model of a car, that's why uh, prior knowledge is important. Okay, we can use the prior knowledge uh, with the existing data to build up the model in several ways. Okay, so you can use uh, this uh, as the substantial prior knowledge. Okay, so that uh, we can uh carry out the procedures of system id uh, more smooth and fluent as i told you before uh, we have three categories of uh, what do you call that uh, system id empirical model uh, which is uh, under white box and the gray box and under black box so easy to remember black box we have zero knowledge White box, we have 100% knowledge, and gray box, we have 50% knowledge of what's inside the system. So the tough one is this one, black box, okay? You don't have any idea about it, okay? So if white box is easy, you can use the first principle information. For gray box, we have 50% knowledge, so you have a certain information about it, so you can use it to model the system. And the explanation is here. Okay, complete identification problem for black box. <coughs> and gray box is the partial identification problem. And the white box is the clear identification problem. Okay, so we know everything. So it's uh, make our life easy for the system ID. Okay, uh, we stop here. For the uh, for the class today, okay. Since uh, it's a fasting month, so uh, my voice become uh, more dry. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about it. Okay, start to coughing. So we continue our lecture on Thursday at eleven. Is it okay? We stop okay, here bro. and there are four kinds. Okay, bro. Of, okay? four kinds okay, of data. I said uh, Hassan.
Yes, sir. yes, sir. Are you there? Yes, yes, Prof. Uh, this is your last subject. Huh? Uh, yes, Prof. If Please. You need uh, and my master's project. Uh, master project and this subject. Who's your uh, supervisor? Uh, my supervisor is uh, Prof. Arifanan. Uh, mm -hmm. I also have a Malaysian uh, culture study that okay. module. So this is your last semester. Are you in Bangladesh or in Malaysia? Uh, currently in Malaysia. Currently in Malaysia. Where do you stay? Uh, in Johor, uh, Melawi department. Inside UTM or outside UTM? Uh, outside UTM. Last time you stay inside UTM. Uh, no, no, outside. But uh, last time I stay in KL, I think. KL. Okay. Oh, then you went to Bangladesh. Uh, yes, yes, bro. Uh, okay. All right. So you settled down now, eh? Uh, yes, bro. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm glad that you are settled settled down. Eh? <laughs> when you attend my class last time, 2020. Eh? Uh, yeah, yes, bro. 2020 or 2021? I think it's 2020. The last part of 2020. Uh, okay. All right. So thank you guys for your uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, and see you on Thursday at eleven. Okay. So five of us. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Bye -bye. you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro.